a powerful video. I, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this. When uh, Matt, our producer, showed it to me, it was the first time I had ever seen this video. This video is uh, almost 40 years old. It was uh, made in the late 1970s. It is a CBS interview with the late Mike Wallace, father of Chris Wallace, right? And Mike Wallace is Jewish. Chris Wallace is Jewish. I'm just setting the record straight. But this was a CBS interview with the Shah of Iran, who was in power at that time. And he made some comments about the power of Israel in America. This is, again, the 1970s. Jimmy Carter was in the White House. Mm -hmm. Watch this video. It is shocking. It's an eye opener. None of the Shah's comments raised hackles like his blast at the American Jewish lobby. Its influence, he claimed, went all the way to the top. Surely, Your Majesty, you're not telling me that the Jewish lobby in the United States pulls the strings of the presidency. Not entirely, but I think even a little too much, even for Israel interests. You think the Jewish lobby in the United States is too powerful for the interests of Israel? I think so. Sometimes they are deserving the interests of Israel because they are, they are pushing around too many people. Well, why would the President of the United States pay attention to that lobby? They are strong. Strong in what sense? They are controlling many things. Controlling what? Newspapers. Medias. Your Majesty. Banks. Finances, and I'm going to stop there. Well, now wait just a second. You really do believe that the Jewish community in the United States is that powerful? They make the media reflect their view of foreign policy? Mm -hmm. Yes. They do not report, we do not report honestly? Don't uh, mix things, please. I don't say the media. I say in the media they have people. Not the entire media. Some newspapers will only reflect their, their views, yes. No. The New York Times, for instance, is owned by the Salzburger family, who are Jewish. Are you suggesting that the New York Times is biased in its treatment of the question of Zionism, Israel's existence, the United States' relationship with the Arab world? I will have to put all the articles of the New York Times written on this subject and wrote the conclusion. You can put this to the computer and it will answer you. What you're saying is that yes, you do believe. Well, let's wait for the answer of the computer. Washington Post. The same. The networks. Yes. I must say you are speaking with your characteristic candor. The Shah of Iran. 1976, did you notice how nervous he was? On CBS News, he was nervous because of what, what he was saying. What happened to the Shah of Iran? 1979, he was removed. The revolution. What happens when you challenge the regime? They have a revolution. That's what we've been talking about. You go up against the system, you have a revolution. So Iran had a revolution. They had the revolution because of that interview on CBS News. They made a decision. He's got to go. He challenged us. He dared to out us. I'm going to tell you what's going on right now. now I'm directing this to YouTube because my staff just notified me while that video was playing that YouTube is suppressing our feed right now. We've been dealing with problems with YouTube recently, and uh, they're shadow banning us right now. We typically have 1,000 people watching the live feed. Right now, we have 12. Okay. Typically, we'll have anywhere from 8 to 15, 20,000 people who will watch the video on YouTube after it's posted for 
uh, video on demand. We'll see tomorrow what the numbers are. But right now, they are suppressing true news. Who owns YouTube? Do your homework. Find out who owns YouTube. Follow the trail. You can't criticize. You cannot criticize the Zionist beast. You can't do it. You, that was the Shah of Iran. Where's he at today? Dead. He's dead. And he lost power in less than three years after that interview. Yes. And now they're shutting down free speech in America. Soon they will control artificial intelligence. Isn't it interesting that the Shah of Iran told Mike Wallace in 1976, put it in the computer. Had you ever heard of anybody in 1976 say, put it into the computer, see what the computer says? No, that's, that's way ahead of time. There. What kind of computers were, I mean, we were, 1976? No computers then. Maybe a big supercomputer. Did they even have them at, at, at Radio Shack? No, no, not until the late 70s, huh? yeah. So he said, put it in the computer, see what the computer says. So they were, they were supercomputers at that time that they could feed data into and get a response, okay? But he was nervous, he was very nervous. He was looking around like, I shouldn't be talking like this, the cameras are on. And speaking of uh, suppression of our voice, Rick, apparently there's people out on Facebook as well trying to do something similar. Sending out messages to people who are listening or watching us on Facebook. So if you're watching live right now and you're getting private messages from people warning you about us, and that's we know yes. it's been going on. How long it's been going on, we don't know, probably for quite a while. But now our viewers and our listeners are bringing it to our attention yes. and telling us, hey, I got this message from so-and-so. or from Saying don't group. watch True News and do not, demo, uh, do not donate money to them. They're anti-Semitic. Right. And so, no, I'm anti-Zionist. That's right. Um, you know, if, if I can get, I'll, I'll do the Chuck Schumer, uh, this is my challenge to Chuck Schumer. If he will take a DNA, DNA test, I'll take one, and let's see which one of us has the most Semitic blood. <laughs> I might turn out to be more Jewish than Chuck Schumer. <laughs> and then I could accuse him of being anti-Semitic against me. I'm willing to do it if Chuck Schumer will do it. Do you think he'll do it? No. Of course not. <laughs> why? He ought, to, he ought to be proud to do it. I know the reason why. Because the hoax, the big hoax will be exposed. That's right. But once you understand, viewers and listeners of this uh, Godcast every day, you don't have to rely on YouTube for this uh, program every day. You don't have to rely on Facebook. You're talking to 12 people right now, Doc. That's all right. I'll talk to my 12. Jesus had 12. He started <laughs> off and did pretty good with that. And so I'll tell this, these 12 right now. You've got another place you can go to. That's why we're doing our new platform. That's why we're creating another alternative, because there's going to come a day where they're going to take your voice away. You can always go to truenews.com and watch us. And usually about twenty to 30,000 of you a day do that. And so we thank you for that. So keep coming. Keep watching us. Keep listening to us on truenews.com. Go there, because there's coming a day where someone is going to flip a switch and say, you know, I'm tired of hearing Rick talk about all this. Well, they banned our, our abortion video last week. Yes. YouTube banned it. Yes. It was too truthful. Mm. And so YouTube censored our report on abortion. Right. Why? Because we quoted Jewish organizations word for word showing that they support abortion. Right. And they, the Jewish leaders, pointed out that Judaism differs from Christianity on the, on the definition of when life begins. Right. And we showed that abortion, the abortion laws and the abortion rulings of the courts line up with the Talmud, not the Holy Bible. Right. The Talmud doesn't line up with the Bible. The Jewish Talmud does not line up with the Bible. Listen, if you're quoting the Talmud or your, your preacher is took quoting the Talmud, he may as well be quoting the Koran, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, the, the Book of Satan, the Upanishads, any of them. They may as well be quoting anything else. They may as well be quoting anything if they're quoting the Talmud, because that's the, the level of equality that it has among religious texts. So, but for the 12 of but, you but watching... But the other books, in all fairness... 
The other books do not blaspheme Jesus Christ. That's right. The Talmud blasphemes Jesus Christ. That's absolutely. Those other religious books, in fact, the Quran uh, treats Jesus with respect. Mm -hmm. It doesn't blaspheme him. The Talmud blasphemes Jesus, blasphemes Mary, calls her a, a prostitute. I mean, it's a, it's a wicked book. And, and these Christians that are reading it, I, I, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you're filling your mind with blasphemous wor words. Get out of it. Mm -hmm.